Well, hello everybody and welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Well, I'm going to get in a fight again with a lot of ham radio operators, but uh, I was on a tech net the other night just listening, as I usually do, and uh, came up again. Do you need a tuner if you have an amplifier? Do you need a tuner if you have it? Well, absolutely you need a tuner if you have, have an amp amplifier. Where? You need a tuner regardless of what kind of antenna you have. So go out there and buy a tuner. Don't be a tight watt. You can buy a 100 watt tuner for $110, uh, you know, used, a good one. And you can buy a manual full legal limit tuner for about $200 used. So, uh, yes, you do need one. And I'm going to prove it to you right now. We're going to do an, an antenna... Uh, analysis using some software on my 40 meter kit which is a rotatable dipole uh, which is on my Mosley 33 beam so I have the kit on there it extends the uh, driven element has some different kind of traps on it and uh, all of a sudden I can work four different bands, 10, 15, 20, and 40. So we're going to do an analysis of the 40 meter part of that Mosley beam, which is simply uh, operates as a rotatable dipole. So should be a good, something good to use for a, what we call a resonant antenna. So here we go. Let me get you onto the screen. All right, there's a little software that I use uh, to do the analysis with. Let me open up the flex. You can see we're on 40 meters. So uh, let's bring up the plotter, and we're going to plot 40 meters and see what it looks like. So here we go. So it's plotting it right now, and... You can, you're going to see in a second, it has a very nice dip in it. <clears throat> and there we go. And there it is. So there's the 40 meter rotatable dipole. Now here's why you need an antenna tuner. Boy, this plot looks really good. In fact, <laughs> Uh, depending on what part of the band you want to work, uh, you can just move this right or left or whatever. You get pretty much the same uh, dip and, and bandwidth is what you're seeing here. Okay, remember this is a rotatable dipole. So anyway, out at the edges, we're up here kind of approaching three to one on the far edge, and let's just look at the two to one. Uh, two to one is probably somewhere around 7.03 or 40, 7.40 or something like that. And the, the uh, two to one SWR up here is somewhere around 7.26 or 2.7, something like that, where it goes across the uh, SWR of two, 2 to 1. Now, as I've said before, radios cut, start cutting back. At probably some of them could start cutting back at 1.5 to 1. They start cutting back the wattage trying to protect themselves. Certainly, they all cut back at 2 to 1 SWR. They could be transmitting 20 or 30 percent less watts at that WR, SWR rather than uh, say at uh, 1.2 to 1 or something like that. So yes, if you're going to work out here beyond 7 point, uh, let's just say 7.250, something out here, or you're going to work below, uh, let's say... Uh, 7 to 7.030. If you're a CW advocate, well, you're going to need to do something with this dipole to get it uh, resonant, at least the way the radio thinks it's resonant, by 
changing it to 50 ohm uh, what it sees at the transceiver. So, yes, you even need a tuner for this very pretty Mosley beam with a 40 meter kit on it. Yeah, to work some of the bands and some of the portions of some bands, you're going to need a tuner. Or you won't get the full power out of your radio. And actually, if you were well down in the band, you might might actually hurt the transceiver. You know, we're getting up here pretty close to three to one over here. So if you were working right off of the bottom of the band, they're pretty close to 7.0. Uh, you may overheat those finals. Especially if you're working CW and keying down a lot, you know, or working some kind of a digital signal at, uh, at that particular uh, frequency. Anyway, let me get you back on my smiling face again. All right. So, when I keep saying that you need a tuner, this is why you need a tuner. I don't care how well you cut an antenna. It's going to be resonant in a certain bandwidth. It, it, I've never seen one that's resonant totally across the whole band that just somebody made. Now, maybe that's possible, that somebody can make one that's uh, less than 1.5 to 1 all the way across the band. I'm sure that's possible, but not likely. So get yourself a tuner. Quit being a tightwad. Go out there and buy a tuner and start using it, okay? And uh, you'll have a little more power uh, reaching the antenna. Don't forget you've got a long piece of coax there, and you've got a loss in that coax. So don't multiply it by having loss at the transceiver where it's not putting out its full uh, watts because uh, you don't think you need a tuner. Anyway, that's all I got for today. Remember to keep looking up uh, to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. 73 clear skies. Y'all be good. See y'all later.